Hello everybody. I was recording another video. I put the camera down to open up another subject and I lost the first one. So here I am again. I'm getting flustered. Now this has got to be YouTube. I can't understand it, but you know, it's getting closer and closer to me getting in my uh, closet and digging out my uh, old HP and see if things are better. I don't know. I don't know if the window updates are still messing up, if it's this camera messing up, if it's YouTube messing me up. I don't know, but I'm getting very tired of it. Now I'm going to try this one again. I'm going to open it up. Let's see what happens. This one is about the New Yorkers. There goes my camera. Okay, it's still going. I hope. So let's see what happens now. Because this is interesting about New York. Yeah. The surge in New Yorkers reloc relocating to Florida. Yep, now I've got to move this over. Let's hope I don't lose nothing. According to official government records, a record number of New Yorkers moved to Florida in August, continuing a trend that began during the COVID-19 lockdown. An al analysis of Florida Department of Highway Safety motor vehicles records found that 5,838 people relocated from New York to Florida in August alone, setting a single month record. In total, 41,885 New Yorkers have moved down south to Florida in 2022 despite the pullback on COVID-19 restrictions. Fashion designer Alvin Valley, who relocated from New York to Palm Beach during the pandemic, gave his take on the mass exodus. First it was the billionaires, then it was the rich following them, Valley said. Now you have the middle class following them. A lot of families just began to feel like New York was becoming unlivable, Valley went on, especially for younger couples with kids in their 30s and 40s. They don't want to get on the subway, he added. It's a safety issue. It's a school issue. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is actively working to curb the rate at which his citizens are leaving going so far as to buy an advertisement space on digital billboards in Florida to entice New Yorkers back home again. Retired New York PD Lieutenant John McCary said he believes the issue stems from strict COVID-19 mandates, rising crime rates and political missteps, and the filth in the New York streets, what I have seen. Yes, and I'm sure you have too. Um, a couple uh, the COVID-19 mandates with the rise in crime and zero competence from our elected officials. A lot of people just don't see a future in New York City for themselves, Macari said. A notable reflux of out-of-staters into Florida was not limited to New York, California, New Jersey, Washington, Oregon, and Pennsylvania are among a list of states that all saw record numbers of their citizens applying for a Florida driver's license. To date, over 320,000 out-of-staters have applied for a Florida license in 22. Wow, that is a lot. That is a lot. Wow. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't know about that. Yeah, I just don't know. Well, Biden's team is exploring legal options against Republican governors. The decision by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to transport immigrants, migrates, from the border to New York City, Chicago, Washington, D.C., angered White House officials who are already upset by Texas Governor Craig Abbott's plan to do the same. Although it is unclear what the Biden administration can do to prevent Republican governors, AXIOS reports that officials are anticipated 
to address the matter on Friday morning. According to NBC News, there is friction about what to deal with the influx of migrants at the southern border between Biden, White House officials, and Department of Homeland Security officials. DHS authorities want to airlift immigrants to the northern border in order to relieve strain on the southern facilities which are already overcrowded. Well, I'm north. <laughs> However, the White House has slowed down preparations for a planned means of moving migrants around the nation. DeSantis and Abbott were accused of kidnap kidnapping, oh my God, by the Democratic governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who made the announcement on social media. Clearly, transporting families, including children, across state lines under false pretenses is morally unprehensible. But it may also be illegal, he said. Now, Karen Jean Paré, the press secretary for the White House, referred any inquiries concerning legal measures to reaction to Republican migrate transports to the Department of Justice while upholding the current process for dealing with immigrants entering the country. She told reporters on Thursday, we have had a process in place. There's a legal way of doing this and for managing migrates. According to DHS data provided to NBC and Axios, the number of migrates crossing the U.S.-Mexican border is getting close to 8,000 a day. 8,000 a day. This proceeding is a summary of an article that originally appeared on Brett Bart. B-R-E-I-T-B-A-R-T. Brett Bart. And I take it that is the end of it. Okay, I don't find any more. Now, I'm not going to push my luck here. I've lost three videos. So, I'm going to close this one out. It's a shorty. I I'm sorry about that. I will be back later to do another one. I don't know if I should try another one right now or not. Because I may lose it. But, should we go for it? Let's go for it. I'll open up one more. Then, that'll put me in time where I have to go anyway. Yeah, August inflation rises 8.3%. Inflation has been eating up wage gains since April 2021. Okay, the latest inflation rise for August has been announced as 8.3%, although it is marginally down from July. Necessity prices continue their upward trend. National year-over-year -year reveal average wage earnings are also down 3.4%, causing erosion in Georgia's average household income. Average hourly pay in America adjusted for inflation is down 2.8% in the past year. Inflation has been eating up wage gains since April of 2021 and shows little sign of significant easing. Washington Post columnist Heather Long said on Twitter, with a minus 3.4% wage inflation for August, Georgia's average household income has seen a minus 3,049 year-over-year loss, bringing the state's current average household income down from 89,679 to 86,630. That is 3,000 something. Wow, a year. On Tuesday, the Bureau of Labor, uh, Labor Statistics released a consumer price index data for the 12 months ending August 20 of 22. The data showed an 8.3% all items annual increase, which re represented a 0.1% rise from July on a seasonally adjusted basis. Some of the largest contributors were increases in the indexes for shelter, food, medical care. According to the BLS, real average hourly earnings for all employees declined 2.8%, seasonally adjusted from August 21 to August 22. The change in real average hourly earnings combined with a decrease of 0.6% in the average work week resulted in a 
percent decrease in real average weekly earnings in the last year. Among other data, food prices rose another 0.8 percent in August and are up 11.4 percent over last year. Take-home grocery prices rose 0.7 percent in August, 13.5 percent in the past 12 months. The index for shelter combined climbed 0 to 7 percent and 6 to 2 percent in the last year. The medical care index rose 0.7 percent in August after rising 0.4 percent in July. Mike Huckabee, former Arkansas go governor and Fox News contributor, took to Twitter to put the latest CPI number into perspective. 8.3 percent inflation means your salary is about half gone. Yeah, 1 slash 12 gone. Isn't that one and a half, I would say? I'm not good at uh, fractions or whatever you want to call that. If you make the same, <laughs> same pay of last year, higher prices rob you a full month of your pay. Well, that's understandable. I've got that one. If you buy the same things this year as last year, inflation is trying to pay for it with 11 months worth of pay instead of 12 months worth, Huckabee wrote in his tweet. So how are we getting ahead? How are we getting better? Biden says, oh, we're fine. We're just leveling out, that's all we're doing right now. Don't worry, folks. It's going to be okay. Okay. Well, we made it, kids. We made it through. Okay. So right now I'm going to take a break. I'll be back later this evening. And uh, hopefully everything will work for me. I'm going to try to redo a couple of those other videos because they were very interesting. Um, and I thought you would like them. So uh, I'm going to say it is 6 o'clock p.m. here now, and it's time for my four-leggers to get fed. So I would have to break right now anyway. So say your prayers. God love you. Stay safe. And I will be back later. Bye for now. See if I can do this without losing anything here. Shut the video off.